Let's analyze this frame using ANSYS APDL. We have a bunch of beams attached to each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight beams. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven joints. The properties are given in here. Young's modulus is 200 gigapascals. Poisson ratio is 0.3. Each of these L's is one meters, which means that um, this element is at 45 degrees with respect to the uh, global coordinate system, and this one is at 135 degrees with, with respect to that. The cross section area of the beam is 2 meters squared, and the force which is applied to this joint in negative y direction is 100 newtons. So, the script that I have written to solve this problem is written in here. Let's go through it and see what each line does. So, the first line finishes and then the second one clears database now with dash prep 7 I start pre-processing and with ET I select beam 189 element type. So ET is short for element type. If I find it in the commands, ET, I give a reference number and then the element type, which is 189, which is a beam element use it that ANSYS element or ANSYS APDL uses to solve beam elements. Then this is the real constant that we don't need to actually give for a beam. Now we're defining the material properties. Let me give a space between them. MP is short for material properties and then the first input is the label. EX is short for Young's modulus in the X direction but if you don't give the Y and Z directions of Young's modulus, it would be isotropic. This number one is the material model, and then we have the value. So define Young's modulus as 200 gigapascal. Then I have the same procedure to define Poisson ratio 0.3. Again, MP is short for material properties. PRXY is Poisson, Poisson ratio and XY. 1 is the material model and 0.3 is the value I want to give. Now I have section type 1. So section type 1 is a beam or rectangular beam. And how do I know? Because section type is the command, number 1 is the reference number, beam is the type, and rect is the subcategory. Again, shown in section type command, I can show it here. section type, reference number, type, and subtype. So type could be a beam, and underneath beam I have several subcategories. Then section data is the values I want to give for that. Depending on what kind of cross-section I want to pick for my beam, I can give the values. So for the rectangular, I only have to give the width, width height, and the number of divisions, which I have given in here. define cross-section data. Next I have to create a bunch of key points. If I go back to my PowerPoint I have these joints which I have to create key points for each joint. So there are seven key points shown by the reference numbers. So I start from one and go all the way to seven 
and each one has its own x and y coordinate. So I create one at x equals 0 and then y equals 0. So this one is to create a key point 1 at x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 0. Then I'm following this six more times to create the next key points. I'm going to skip annotating them until the last one, which creates a key point at x equals 2, y equals 0, and z equals 0. And this is key point 7. Next, I have to use these key points to create lines. So this one creates a line. between kp1 and 2 and then I create key points between 2 and 3 and all on and on until the last line is creating a line between kp6 and 7. So if I copy what I have so far in ANSYS APDL. I will see that this is happening. I have the key points created for me at given locations. And now I can come here, if I minimize this, and copy the line commands. I can see that the lines are going to be created for me. So if I come to numbering and enable these two and do L plot, I can see that line one is cre created between key point one and key point two. Line two is created between key point two and key point three. And on and on, I have, for example, line six between key point four and key point six. Again, if I go back to my script, line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, line 5, and line 6 is this one, which is between key points 4 and 6. After that, I have to mesh my model to find or to come up with the finite element model. This line, set element type to ref number one or reference one which was in here in line five of my script the reference number one was given to element type 189 and then here is set keep uh, or real constant to one which we don't have anything for it Then I say set material model to 1, which I defined here, material model. And then I can say set section type to 1, which I defined here as a rectangular beam on line 11 of my code. Then I'm given E size, which means set element size to 0 0.05, which means after I mesh the lines, each element on these lines will be 5 centimeters long or 0 0.05 meter long. And then I can mesh all lines. So if I copy this part in ANSYS and run it, see that the elements are created for me. If I do nplot, short for plot nodes, these are all the nodes which are selected for me. I have nodes at each joint and along the line. And the distance between the nodes is 0 0.05 meters. Now it's time to apply the boundary conditions. 
So the D command applies the displacement or degree of freedom boundary condition. The node with parentheses and three values inside of it selects a node at a certain coordinate. So X, Y, and Z. So here I'm selecting the node at location 0, 0, 0. And I'm saying apply a zero degree of freedom for all degrees of freedom of this node, which means all the displacements and all the rotations will be zero. So again, if I look at the D command in the APDL, here it is. I select the node. The label could be all for a structural. And then the value is zero. And I'm doing the same thing for nodes for a node at location x2, y0, and z0. I'm saying apply all the or fix all the degrees of freedom. Then I'm applying a force at a node located at x1, y2, and z0. The force is in y direction, so it's fy, and the value is minus 100. So if I copy these lines and ANSYS APDL, you see that this node and this node are fixed, and a node or, or a force and the negative y direction is applied to that node. So let's solve it here. Start solution and solve and then finish. So if I do that, if I come here, So the solution is done. Now let's do post-processing. So post one, start post-processing, and PRR soul prints reaction forces. Here in this line, I'm selecting nodes attached to key points. So select nodes attached to KP. I can show that in the help documentation, NSLK. So here, NSLK. Select nodes associated with these selected key points. Because I haven't selected any key points before this command, all the key points are selected, and all the nodes attached to all the key points will be selected for me. So if I run this portion, and just put it here and then do n plot you see that only these nodes are selected only seven nodes and i can do n list to show a list of the selected nodes with with their given x and y and z coordinates next i want to print nodal displacement for the selected nodes and then print nodal rotations for the nodes and then select everything. So let's copy all of these in APDL and see what we get. So here is the rotations. Nodes 1 and nodes 316 don't have any rotations because they're fixed, but the other nodes are actually rotating in space or moving. And nodes 1 and 316 don't have any displacements either, but the displacements of the other nodes are given here for me. And then I have the reaction forces. So only two nodes, this one and this one, rea have reactions in the y direction or in any direction because they're the only fixed nodes. And so I have 50 and 50 in the y direction. And that's because the actual force, the external force was 100 in the negative y direction. So the reaction force would be 50 in the positive. And if I go back to E plot, I have these two frames, let me close these two windows, this 
and this are actually pulling on this frame or on this beam or on that beam. That's why I get reaction forces. But because of symmetry, you see that they're in negative or they're, uh, they have opposite signs, which means they cancel each other out. And then I can see the moments in Z direction for both nodes. I can now come here in general post-processing and say PL and sol plot nodal solution u in the y direction and this is how my beam would deform so or my frame I can take a look at the size or in you know, its actual shape this is the deformation of my form or, or frame I want to close or I want to disable the uh, element shape so here we learned how to solve a frame problem or a frame analysis using ANSYS APDL